In 2017, I interviewed Stanford economist Tony Siba about his study on robotaxis or mobility as a service it's called. And essentially that is an electric, autonomous electric vehicle that you summon to you, uh, your house say with a, an app and it takes you where you wanna go. It's cheap, it's efficient and it's convenient and it is the way of the future according to SIBA. Well, there was a lot of skepticism about that study at the time, but here we are four years later and robo-taxis are beginning to take off. So we're going to talk to Saji Ivanata of Guidehouse uh, Insights. He's the Senior Research Analyst for Sustainability and Infrastructure, and he's written a study about an update, I guess, about uh, robo-taxis. So uh, welcome to the interview, Saji. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, look, uh, you're talking about uh, ride hailing as already, uh, we're talking about Uber and Lyft and so on, has already disrupted the taxi industry. The next stage of that is the robo taxis. And what we're seeing is already some pilot projects. We're seeing, you know, it's, it's beginning to get a toehold in the market. So maybe you could give us a, an overview of, uh, of your update and where robo taxis are at. Yeah, sure. So um, I think probably in, within the scope of, of the study, uh, we were look at, really looking at the next 10 years for um, what, we, what we see are likely to be the, the trends and growth uh, and adoption of, of robotaxis. Um, and I would, I would say probably the headline um, message is that, you know, we, we see a, potent, a great potential in the market for, for robotaxi services. However, um, I think despite a lot of the fanfare, um, I still think that we are several years away from really being able to see them as a, uh, as, as a, a common feature on our streets. Um, and obviously that will also vary, that'll be heavily dependent on your particular region as well. Um, there'll be very different adoption trends in, in, in different markets. Um, so yes, it will be a little, bit, a little uh, while away. Um, however, we've started to see the emergence of several or pilots um, around the world, which are showing some promise. Um, um, I, I guess um, dealing with the immediate challenges with the, with the pandemic and the, and the limited amount of testing um, and um, um, I, I guess cash available to do these um, um, pilots. Um, and um, I think that um, one of the, 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 the other interesting uh, insights is um, not just on the development of the um, um, automated driving technologies for robot taxis, um, but also for how they're using, using the same technology to test and deploy for other technologies and applications such as uh, automated delivery vehicles. Right. Well, let's let's talk about key drivers of future demand. And I would uh, you point out that personal vehicle ownership is on the decline in the more in the developed economies. So we're talking maybe uh, Europe and, and uh, North America and perhaps uh, China as well. And, and uh, the, also in the big urban centers, uh, they are not always well served uh, by uh, transit options. Their transportation options are, are more limited and that's likely to be where the, the demand is strongest. Is that a fair summation? I, yeah, I think that's a very good point uh, and, and interesting insight. Um, I think one of the opportunities that we see for rubber taxis in uh, urban areas is that connection for you know, perhaps like the last leg of a, of a journey. So um, a traveler may not live near to the, um, to the nearest transit station, um, but obviously it's going to be more efficient um, cost and time wise to, to use mass transit to reach somewhere near to the destination. Um, and then a, a robo taxi, for example, could provide that convenient, um, relatively low cost transportation from the, the nearest uh, mass transit station to the final destination. So we're talking about a first mile, last mile kind of uh, uh, piece of the puzzle in, in many transit. And we're seeing that in Canada already, for, instance, for example, uh, just in the last uh, year or two, we've seen a number of automated shuttle uh, kind of, so same kind of, kind of deal. Um, what, I imagine that one of the major challenges that robo taxis are going to face is going to be the technology. Autonomous uh, driving technology has developed a little slower because of uh, technical challenges than we thought. Is is that a fair comment? Yes, um, I think I think that um, everyone who's been involved in trying to develop the automated driving technology have realized the challenge that it is. 
Um, I think robo taxi services generally, um, that's compounded with trying to find um, an appropriate business model um, for, for profitable services. But um, you know, we've seen you know, the delay in launches of pilots or technologies due to, to, to technical challenges. I think one good example was um, Daimler who completely pulled out from developing robo taxi. They, I think they, they, they realized that actually this is very challenging and we need to throw no, we need to burn a lot of cash to, to be able to to, to solve this, uh, this this challenge. So so yeah, that I think certainly that's been um, probably the, the main um, obstacle that's been um, slowing down the um, deployment of, of pilots. Right. And uh, what are can you give us an example of uh, one or two of the uh, the business models that are emerging? Sure. Um, I, I think probably. What we're seeing at this moment being most uh, commonly deployed are ride hailing type services. So, for example, with um, Waymo, of course, um, and we've we've seen um, 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 Pony AI, for example, provide these services. But um, we, what we've seen is that it, the, the robot taxi services are being provide almost as a seamless part of the, the royal hailing experience. So to, to a customer who wants to, to summon the, the ride, um, there's not too much different to hailing a normal um, taxi, for example. Um, and so this in this model, um, the, the fleet of, of robo taxis um, should be provided by the rail, the ride hailing uh, platform, um, not necessarily owned by the ride hailing platform, but um, from a consumer perspective, uh, provided by the platform, um, will be there to fulfill the the, the, the request for a trip. Um, in terms of the um, to, to the vehicles themselves, um, ride hailing companies one, one of their features is that they, they don't really own the assets in terms of the the actual vehicles. Um, with conventional cars, of course, the, the cars are usually owned by the drivers themselves. But in the case of rubber taxis, um, where there are no drivers to own them. Um, we, we see that service being provided by external fleet management companies, um, providing the fleets and the maintenance um, of these vehicles for the ride hailing platforms. Um, so, I, so I think probably this will be the, 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 the most prominent early um, business model for the deployment of, of robo taxis for, for consumer purposes. So you're talking about uh, Uber would contract with one of these fleet management companies that would actually provide the, the robo taxis. And of course, the big advantage here is the cost per mile travel, because if you've got an, an electric vehicle, now doesn't have a driver, uh, so you don't have that cost. And you could, these uh, basically, these taxis can operate not quite 24 hours because they'd have to recharge, but nevertheless, uh, they, you, they can operate uh, many hours in a day, which then lowers your cost of per kilometer very dramatically. And so what you essentially get, and this is what Siba argued in 2017, is that you get pretty close to your marginal cost per of a kilometer. If it isn't zero, it's close to zero. And then that changes, really changes the transportation model in, uh, you know, for how people get, get around. So if you had to look out, uh, Saji, over the next uh, 10, 10 decades, or sorry, 10 years, um, give us your sense of how this is going to develop. Yeah, sure. And in, in terms of the, um, the, 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 the lowering in the cost of, of the operational costs of road taxis. Yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I, I, I agree with this thing that, that you said that um, eventually the, the, the operational costs of rubber taxis are going to, is going to decrease. Um, I think at the moment, um, fortunately, we're not there yet. Um, we're still in, the, in, the, in a, obviously a, a piloting phase, I, I would say, um, where the actual operational costs are, are, are pretty high. So, for example, we still need in the majority of pilots um, to have um, some kind of a safety uh, driver, as it were, um, just, just to make sure that um, um, nothing on will happen. So, um, in addition to that, obviously, the, the cost of the, the technology is, is very high at this moment, and um, there's a lot of you know, learning still going on in optimizing the um, um, the, the driving of, of these vehicles. Um, but I think what we will see um, as more and more pilots are starting to be uh, deployed in not only this year, but next year, for example, um, I think that 
we're suddenly going to start to see some certain efficiencies in terms of being able to mass produce um, the, um, the automated driving um, hardware. Um, also, we're going to see greater efficiencies in, in, in the software. And the, obviously, the, the efficiencies of scale of being able to deploy this um, um, at, a much, at a much lower cost. Um, so we'll probably start to see um, yeah, a, a parity. I think at this moment, there's no parity with um, a human driver yet, um, just because we're it's still in the infancy of the technology. But um, I think once we start to see that, um, that cost parity with human drivers, um, that's when we see a, a, a greater uptick in the um, adoption um, of robot taxis. Uh, final question, Saji. Um, in your opinion, uh, are, is this a business model? Is this a technology that will ultimately get a hold in the marketplace and be successful? Yes, I, I think that ultimately um, it is the it is the way forward, and we're seeing automation in, in all you know in all forms being um, um, offering the promise of lower operation operational costs, which is probably the key drivers. Um, so the, the key driver for any business that is providing a fleet of rubber taxis is that operational cost saving, um, as we've seen with the big ride hailing companies. Um, I think they're all holding out for. Uh, automated driving technologies. Um, they're struggling with actually um, balancing books with being profitable at this moment, despite their great expansion and um, um, very high revenues. Um, ultimately, they're looking for that lowering in operational cost, And I think that will really drive the, um, the, the growth in, in robo-taxi fleets. Um, that, and, and of course, the customer, one of the key things customers want um, in terms of ride hailing, um, I would say are low costs, firstly, but secondly, um, that reliability in having um, a vehicle available when, you know, as soon as possible. So I think robot taxis will really be focused on achieving those two things. And I think that will help to, um, to, to, to um, at least uh, provide some degree of success in, in robot taxi services. Wonderful. Saji, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.